Hey guys, Jamie Benizri. I am with one of my favorite entrepreneurs, Tina. Yeah, hi. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for being here. Uh, Tina, I'm really happy you're on the show because um, you are one of the most passionate, energetic, and smartest entrepreneurs I know. <laughs> you're so nice, thanks. And you have, you're like my drug dealer because you, you give me coffee. Absolutely. And you give me really good coffee. I know. And you sell some of the best espresso machines in Montreal. Thank you. And what I want to know is what makes your company mm-hmm. unique? Unique and special. Yes. Right. Well, there's three different uh, three different sides to it, right? So the first one is going to be about the coffee itself. I deal with a roaster from Naples, yeah. which has been around. Fe- Naples, Italy, not Naples, Naples like, Italy, no, not no. Naples like Colorado or Vermont or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Naples. Naples, Italy, okay. you said. And um, the roaster has been around since 1922. So it's about 100 years of um, family business, right? Yeah. Family business roasting in Naples. So we have a great cup of coffee. We have a great espresso, a great blend that's been around for almost 100 years. Sure. The second thing is that we deal with biodegradable pods. Right? Everybody wants pods because it's clean, it's fast, it's easy, yeah. but everybody has a problem with the plastic or the aluminum. Exact. So we came up with something that is completely biodegradable, but the envelopes are recyclable as well. So that's great as a second thing. And yeah. the third thing that makes us special is the business model. So we cater to businesses, restaurants, and offices sure. that do small to medium um, consumption. So between 10 to 50, that is our target. That's your niche. That's my niche, right? Because these these types of companies or businesses, they usually don't get as much of a service as they should. Exactly. So we offer them that service. So I can say, I mean, you yeah. installed machines for us. Yeah. And you and your mom. Yeah. Have installed them with your own hands. Absolutely. Which is which was an amazing, which is amazing. Yeah, of course. So I install all the machines that I sell because <laughs> I like to be there and then you know teach people how to use them, yeah. and take out comments, and so your customer service. I think that's what your clients. Hundred percent as well, right? So the whole, the whole service is based on the on the service afterwards. So once they start using the coffee, exactly. once they have the machines, so when they call, who's answering? What's going on? Uh, do we send somebody to fix the machines? Do we do what do we do? The delivery? How long does it take? So yeah. we make sure. They always have coffee. They always have a functional machine. So business is hard, right? Yeah. But it's fun for you. Absolutely. But yeah, you had des enjeux juridiques. You've had yes. things that were legal in nature yeah. that you've had to overcome. Absolutely. Tell me about two things, two legal things yeah. that you had to deal with where you found a business solution to overcome. Yeah. Well, the first one is what every business in Quebec kind of stumbles upon, right? It's What's all, that? Obviously French on packaging. <laughs> um, well, I, I well, there's, you have to have French on packaging. People need to be able to read exactly. whatever what they're consuming, right? I agree with that. But when you import, um, the one thing that people forget is whoever makes that packaging overseas yeah. might not understand um, les enjeux that you will get for getting French on in coffee. Naples. Yeah, they don't in get Naples, it in Naples, like yeah. why do you need French? We have German, we have Turkish, we have Arabic, and yeah. Italian, and English. Why do you want French on top of it? There's no space for French. Yeah. I'm like, Scrap Turkish, you know. <laughs> so it's very hard to. Make people understand it takes yeah. a long time for them to move. But the key to that, the, the way we solved it, is just by keeping and having a great relationship with our um, fournisseur down there in Italy. Yeah, your suppliers. So, yeah, the suppliers. Thank you. And um, I try to go every year, you know, just yeah. to hang out with them sure. and tell them about the challenges that we move That must here. be a terrible trip for you to hang out in Italy. so boring. Yeah, I'm sure. I just, I hate it. <laughs> what was the second thing that, you, the, that you had to go through? Um, the second thing that I had to go through would be... Um, the uh, the les codes HS HS codes. Yeah. So when you import, there's a specific ten-digit code that is applied to every type of product that you import to determine what type of taxes you ought to pay. Okay. Right. So when you import, you have taxes to pay on products. Yeah. Okay. Fortunately enough, coffee is not taxed, but as we import machines and also cups and sugars and all kind of promotional articles, each one is taxed. So the fun thing is that that nobody really knows is that when you hire a company, even if it's an international company, sure. to do your freight. Um, they put a code on whatever you tell them that is in your container. Let's say the code is not applied properly because there are a lot of specifications Mm -hmm. and a lot of categories. Mm -hmm. Let's say there's a category that is wrongly labeled. You are 100% as a business liable for the taxes that are owed to the government. So you can have a surprise 10 years or five years down the line where they inspect your containers and say, okay, this is the code, whatever. And somebody asks a question and says, oh, but maybe it's the, the other code and the taxes that apply are different, then you retroactively owe that money to the government. Yeah. And you can't go after the fake company that made a mistake. Exactly. And that information is also not really available to regular people. Yeah, so that's it's, a good point. it's very hard and complicated to find out if you actually do have the right code. So that, that was the second challenge. How did we overcome it? 
I went to see all the coffee suppliers in Montreal. I said, what's your code for this and this and this? And I made sure that... You did your homework. Yeah, you need to do your homework because yeah. I don't want to owe thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars to the government in the end, right? So that's what you do. I call all the guys and say, what do you have for codes for this specific type of product? Nobody agreed, so that pulled exactly. up a red flag. But we, we figured it out all together in the end. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> Tana, Jamie, League of Logic, uh, with Logic TV. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Try her coffee. It'll get you buzz, and it's really good. <laughs> Thanks. Take care. If you like this video, don't forget to press on that little thumb. Don't forget to comment below, share the page, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.